Good evening, everyone. It's May 31st, 2013. I'm happy to welcome you to our Friday night webcast featuring Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. This is part of our regular series of webcasts occurring every Friday night at this time on LaRouchePack.com. Uh, my name is Matthew Ogden, and I will be moderating tonight's webcast. Uh, I'm joined in the studio by Leandra Bernstein and Cody Jones, who will be posing questions after Mr. LaRouche's opening remarks. And so, without further ado, I introduce to you Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. We have a couple of things that probably are going to be thrown at me this, today, and that will be rather interesting. <clears throat> We're in a... a situation of crisis, unusual crisis, and the whole system is about to come down. So uh, I think let it proceed from this point on, because I think there's some things rumbling around which I'll be spending my time responding to during this process. But we're looking forward to those questions now. Okay, so the first question that we have for you, Lynn, is really looking for your comments, your insights on some recent developments that are coming out around the notorious Tony Blair, where there's an article in the Daily Telegraph that reports on comments from Lord David Owen, the former former secretary, who is commenting on a report which is yet to be released by Sir John Chilcott, which was a it was announced four years ago that they would carry out an inquiry into the role of Britain in the Iraq War. Four years later, nothing has been released. Now, what Lord David Owen is saying is that the reason this has not been released is because there's a conspiracy, a cover-up underway, to hide, in particular, what he highlights is the relationship between Blair and Bush. Now, what he says is that one year before we actually went into war, before the decision was made to invade Iraq, that Tony Blair had already given his assurances to Bush that he would back up, that Britain would back up the United States in an invasion of Iraq, a full year before even evidence was put forward around the phony weapons of mass destruction, what have you. Now, what's being discussed as to why Tony Blair is so adamant about this not coming out, about it not being released that there was this discussion one year prior to even the evidence for war being presented is that Tony Blair obviously has his eye on becoming the head of the European Commission and that if this were to come out it would destroy his chances of taking over that position and would potentially destroy his political career. Now it should be recognized that the article I think where maybe they've got it a bit inverted is that they make it seem as if it was Tony Blair supporting George Bush in Bush's efforts to go to Iraq. But as we know, Tony Blair, since 99, has been outspoken about the overthrowing of the Westphalian principle, destroying the principle of sovereignty of nations, and doing it under the name of this responsibility to protect policy, that this consortium of international uh, grouping is now going to take it upon themselves to determine where there are human rights violations, where there are governments that have gone wrong, and that they will take it upon themselves to replace those governments with ones which are more supportive of the free trade system, what have you. Yeah. And so I think the reality is it was Tony Blair who was pushing the policy on behalf of the empire to go to war in Iraq and really beat Bush into it. So if you could comment on the significance of the fact that this is now coming out and what really, how we should really be thinking about the situation. Well, you're going to have to go back a bit earlier than that to get the picture because you re in this case, you really have to see where it starts. You can't pick up on some event and then trace it from that event. This started a long time ago. For example, the father of George H.W. Bush was a backer of Adolf Hitler and as a matter of fact organized the financing between British and New York areas financing of the whole operation of the Hitler operation. Huh? George H.W. Bush is a no-gooder. He's not in such good health these days but the whole Bush family is essentially closely tied 
to the same crowd. The same crowd is tied to the British crowd. And this goes way back. And the Bush family has been that. You just look at George H.W. Bush, the wimp, the nasty wimp. Huh? And that's what he is. This is a guy who jumped out of an airplane that was shot at. He had left two people in the back back seat, so we say. He jumped and left them to, on their own as the pilot. So he's not really, these bushes are not really trees. <laughs> not family trees or otherwise. But then you get the younger bush. Now, he was a real, he was really a sick, sick, sicky in many ways. He still is a sick, sick, sicky in many ways. Now, what is true is that given the background of Bush, 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 and Bush, uh, that the fact is that things did pick up at a certain point in this process it of a more relevant way, relevant to the question as such. Uh, my first experience with this Blair aspect was I was working in, together, in a sense, with the uh, BBC on this operation about the Iraq operation. And our shared view was there was no reason for anyone to get into a war in Iraq. And the arguments of, of Blair at that time were fake. This man is a faker from the beginning to end. There's not a word of truth in him, unless it's Satan, comes from Satan's lips of them themselves. So what has happened is that it was at the time when I was working with the BBC, just in a you know, reporter to reporter kind of thing, it was a BBC operation. And certain people were killed in England over this business. This is that kind of a business. This man, Blair, is degenerate beyond any way of measuring it. He's beyond all measurement in corruption and evil. He's also the instrument of the Queen. Now that gets to the business. And that's where people get, make a lot of mistakes because they like to narrow the problem down to this guy plus this guy plus this guy and think they've got a little conspiracy which is new and bro has broken out then. This is, goes way back. This is the British Empire. Now remember that in, during the Copenhagen period when the Copenhagen event was going on, the same thing was going on. And the intention was, as the queen herself, now, now you're down to business, the queen business. And the queen business is a, is a part of the Dutch business. The British monarchy is a Dutch monarchy. Huh? And they came, they came in that way, and so the British are nothing but a branch of the Dutch system. And if you know what the Dutch do, as I know a little bit about that, it ain't good. They just had a family celebration recently, and it was not good at all. It was disgusting. It was not only bad, it was just plain disgusting. And they have a, co well, for example, if you're over 70 years of age, and you have a, 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 something wrong with your finger, the, uh, the Dutch business will probably have you terminated as a, having a health defect get you off the road. In other words, you're a foreigner. You wander into the Netherlands, you get a cold, and they, you find yourself dead in the morning. That's the way they run their, their system. So the, what you're dealing with, you're dealing with a system which now is the Dutch business because the British, the British Empire is a product of the Dutch Empire. Remember, the Dutch Empire organized the attack on Louis XIV. That started the war with him. That war was then extended into another, another stage and became the whole business. And it was the Dutch end of the thing which did it. It was not the, not the Venetians, it was the Dutch. And it's still the Dutch, the damn Dutch. Right? So what you're dealing with here is, is a very particular, relatively speaking on a good scale, a particular problem which is a part, is a nasty thing in itself, and it's a part of a much bigger, much more nasty thing. Now, what was the purpose? The purpose lies with the queen. Now, the queen during the period, this same period, the time of the two events were going on, that the intention, the intention was to reduce the human population 
by genocidal means, uh, and the Queen was explicit on this, and the whole British apparatus put on it, is to say that the uh, system must reduce the human population fairly rapidly from 7 billion people on this planet to approximately 1. Now, Blair is a typical expression of the Queen's errand boy. He's a, he's a mass murderer. He's promoted murder against Britons and others, just as, you know, on a health reason. The same, exact same policy of Adolf Hitler's health policy. So Blair, and everything that Blair said in starting the Iraq war was a lie. Now, this, in this comes then George W. Bush, dumb Bush. And that was, what, that was the scheme that, that started Blair's foreign career. He was backed on the, on the Iraq, long Iraq war, for which there was no reason whatsoever. This Iraq war is the basis of the wars in North Africa. They're the basis of the wars in the Middle East and so forth. Blair, among others, beauties, is a man who believes in Satan. I don't know if Satan believes in him, but that, that's another question. So Blair is, is about as dirty as you could possibly get. I don't think there's anyone in this planet who is not as bad as Blair, and some of them might even be worse. I think the worst c case in this thing is the Queen herself and her Dutch cousins, who just had a family celebration recently in, in Europe. So the point is, we are dealing with pure evil. The British monarchy is, in this, in this period, totally evil. Yeah, they created Hitler. They created Hitler. Then they changed their mind and decided to go against Hitler with the support of Franklin Roosevelt. So the thing, there are complexities, but the essential thing is the British Empire is pure evil. It always has been. The Dutch side of it is evil. Blair is evil. But so what? The whole damn crowd is evil. It's, why do you pick on poor Blair, who's only a second-rate evil person when the Queen is a real bitch? <laughs>